All right. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, apologies uh, for making you wait uh, yet again. Um, and happy Monday, because it is Monday and we have no choice. Uh, this morning, the Under Secretary General for the UN Office of Counterterrorism, Vladimir Vorankov, briefed Security Council members on the threat posed by uh, ISIL to international peace and security and the range of UN efforts of member states encountering the threat. He said that in conflict zones, the threat of Daesh has increased as evidenced by ISIL's regrouping and increasing activity in Iraq and Syria. However, in non-conflict zones, the threat appears to have decreased in the short term. Measures to minimize the spread of COVID-19, such as lockdown restrictions on movement, seems to have reduced the risk of terrorist attacks in many countries. Mr. Voronkov added that the pandemic's impact on recruitment, fundraising activities remains unclear, as its socioeconomic fallout could exacerbate conditions conducive to terrorism and increase the medium to long-term threat both within the outside uh, and inside conflict zones. Meanwhile, there is no clear indication of a change in ISIL's strategic direction under its new leaders. He stressed that decisive action is required for member states on humanitarian, human rights, and security grounds, and reiterated that the UN system stands ready to support their efforts in this regard. <clears throat> Michelle Connix, the executive director of the Counterterrorism Executive Directorate, also briefed council members. And on Mali, I can tell you that we are, of course, continuing to follow very closely the situation in, the, in that country, especially following the mediation efforts lead, lead, being led by the ECOWAS delegation, which uh, those efforts are reportedly focused, among other issues, on the modalities of the transition. On the ground, our peacekeeping mission reports that on August 22nd, the ECOWAS delegation had a number of individual meetings, including uh, with UN uh, peacekeeping officials. MINUSMA reiterates the UN support to the ECOWAS mediation efforts and updated the delegation on the UN activities since August 18. The mission continues to work with all stakeholders in support of a negotiated solution. And the next in the series of the Secretary General's policy briefs on the impacts of COVID-19 will be published shortly, just a few minutes after midnight New York time. Uh, this latest policy brief provides an overview of the socioeconomic impacts from the pandemic on tourism, including the millions of livelihood it sustains. It highlights the role that tourism plays in advancing the sustainable development goals, including its relationship with environmental goals and culture. The briefs calls on the, urge, uh, on the urgency of mitigating the impact of livelihoods, especially for women and youth in the informal sectors. And on Syria, as you will have seen, the Special Envoy's Office has received confirmation that three members of the Syrian Constitutional Committee's small body have tested positive for the COVID-19 virus. Following a constructive first meeting, the session of the Constitutional Committee is currently on hold. Members of the committee were tested before they traveled to Geneva and again upon arrival. Mask wearing and social distancing measures were in place during the committee um, when the committee met at the Palais des Nations today. Having informed the Swiss authorities and the UN office in Geneva immediately, this have been taken consistent with protocols to mitigate any risks and tracing of anyone who have, made, been, have been in close contact with the affected persons is underway. And we have a humanitarian update for you on Libya, where we remain concerned about a possible humanitarian disaster should the continued escalation and mobilization around Sirt lead to military operations. The lives of more than 125,000 people in and around Sirt remains a great risk. Migrants and refugees and asylum seekers continue to attempt to cross the Mediterranean at great risk for their lives. Last week, at least 45 people, including five children, drowned in the worst shipwreck reported so far this year when the vessel's engine exploded off the coast of Zwara. We reiterate the joint statement issued by our colleagues at the International Organization for Migration and the UN Refugee Agency, urging states to review their approaches in search and rescue operations at sea. More than 6,700 migrants and refugees who tried to flee Libya have been intercepted, excuse me, <coughs> have been intercepted or rescued and returned so far this year. The COVID-19 cases in Libya continue to increase exponentially with more than 11,000 cases and nearly 200 deaths as of yesterday. 
While confirmed cases are not higher in the West, particularly around Tripoli and Misrata, the larger proportion of the people live in the South have been affected. Capacity for testing, tracing, and treatment of people remains extremely low across the country, and there are shortages of equipment and supplies all over. Uh, fuel shortages and electricity cuts of more than 18 hours a day are making living conditions even worse. Health facilities have, been su have also suffered from electricity cuts, forcing some to temporarily suspend operation. Access for aid workers continue to be a challenge, which is compounded by the pandemic virus restriction measures. We, along with our partners, are continuing to support a response to the virus by providing supplies and personal personnel protection equipment. We are also having reached, have reached more than 240,000 people uh, with the help of our partners with humanitarian assistance since the beginning of the year, including 66,000 internally displaced and 58,000 migrants and refugees. Um, and, <clears throat> excuse me, you will have seen that late on Friday, we issued a statement on Libya in which the Secretary General said he welcomed the calls for a ceasefire and an end to hostilities in Libya, which were announced in separate statements <coughs> excuse me, by Prime Minister Al Siraj and the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Aguila Saleh. The Secretary General hopes the calls for a ceasefire will be respected immediately by armed forces from both sides and its implementation will be taken up quickly within the UN facilitated 5 plus 5 joint military uh, discussions. Turning to Haiti, Tropical Storm Laura passed the country yesterday, pausing, causing heavy rains and strong winds and dangerous sea conditions. Uh, we, along with NGOs and governmental partners, are already on the ground to respond, and the UN Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs is supporting the government-led effort to, co <coughs> to coordinate potential evaluation missions to the most <coughs> impacted areas. Nine fatalities were reported. Two people are missing, and 35 have been evacuated. The preliminary reports indicate that numerous houses were flooded, destroyed or damaged, and some roads were blocked. Telecommunications have also been affected. And um, I have an update for you on the oil spill off the coast of Mauritius. As you know, the resident coordinator there, Christine Umatoni, is bringing together various UN entities to support the government's response. Today, the group of regional UN uh, entities launched a $2.5 million recovery fund to support national efforts. Those efforts focus on <clears throat> women, men, and children whose livelihoods have been impacted by the oil spill, especially the fishing community. The UN res regional directors for Eastern and Southern uh, Africa have also pooled an initial $250,000 to kickstart the fund, which was launched during a meeting uh, between the pres President Rupun of Mauritius and Regional Director for International Organization of Migration for Southern Africa, Charles Quinnen, and that was done on behalf of the UN Regional Group. Also today, the rear part of the ship, which was split in two, has reportedly sunk with sustained winds. Uh, despite the sustained winds, the oil cleanup continues. Uh, and the UN team in the Philippines, uh, led by the resident coordinator there, Gustavo Gonzalez, has strongly condemned attack today on uh, one of the Philippines' southern islands, with preliminary reports saying dozens of people have been killed and more than 70 wounded. The UN team expressed its deep condolences to the government and the affected communities um, and wishes a speedy recovery uh, for all those uh, injured. Um, and I think uh, that is actually it uh, for me. So let's go to the chat. Uh, and bear with me two seconds. Uh, I apologize. It's Monday. Uh, okay, uh, Nizar, you have a question. Uh, thank you, Stefan. Um, hope you are hearing me. Uh, yeah. Stefan, um, first of all, what's the situation regarding Al Hasaka? He is denying water to the whole city for, for weeks now. And uh, I understand that there was some communication between the Secretary General and the Syrian ambassador about that. And uh, Mr. Guterres has promised to do some mediation in this regard. Has he done anything? Uh, has he been in touch with the Turkish authorities? Uh, I will uh, check on you. I'm not. Uh, 
Uh, I will check. Uh, I expect to have an update for you a bit later. Uh, about the terrorist attack today on the gas pipeline supplying Syria's power stations. Do you have any statements on that? No, of course. I mean, listen, we, we, what we do know is that there was an explosion. We obviously, uh, we as UN have no, uh, I, I don't have any update to exactly what happened. Uh, but should this be a deliberate uh, attack on civilian infrastructure, it is something that we will condemn and that we have condemned in the past, uh, whether it's on, on natural gas facilities, on water, access to electricity. Uh, one more question regarding Lebanon. There is a lot of complaint by many organizations in Lebanon about the distribution of aid, which is not going through the state, of course, as you well know. The NGOs are arbitrarily distributing the aid. People who have been struck by the explosion 20 days now have still have not been visited by for assessment at least, let alone being given any aid. I know that OCHA has been distributing some, but many people are still uh, starving. Some of them are starving, especially the elderly who is uh, seeing their houses uh, destroyed they haven't been given any aid. I mean, listen, if your correspondents have information, we will put them in touch with our local uh, OCHA officials. It's obviously important that everyone who uh, needs aid gets aid, regardless of who they are, where, where they live, or so, or any other, any other distinctions. Does that include the refugees and uh, yes. foreigners? I mean, I think we were very clear that anyone who needs aid, regardless of their status, whether they be a refugee, a migrant, uh, whether they are legally in the country or not, uh, needs to get aid. Okay, any other questions? Uh, Steph, I Go ahead, had a question. And then uh, Abdul, uh, uh, Abdul Hamid. Go ahead. Um, <clears throat> my question is on Libya. The... Um, Hiftar's people have dismissed uh, the ceasefire proposal by the government, calling it a deception. His spokesman said yesterday that the proposal represents nothing but throwing dust in eyes and deceiving the local and international public, and that was a quote. Um, does the Secretary General have any comment on that? Look, I it is clearly extremely important that all the parties involved work on the same uh, basis, and that is for, for a ceasefire, cessation of military activities for the good of the Libyan people themselves. I mean, I think I've, I've just read out a rather comprehensive humanitarian update, uh, which underscores a very dire situation. And that situation is dire, among other things, because of the continuing fighting and the continuing risk of uh, escalation uh, especially around uh, around Sirte. Um it is it is important that uh, whether it's the uh, uh, the Libyan uh, National Army or others, the government national accord, that they all uh, work together with the UN uh, within the UN facilitated a five plus five uh, joint military commission. Uh, just to put a halt to the fighting for the good of the Libyan people. Okay, um, Abdel Hamid. Thank you, Stefan. A follow up uh, on the Libyan issue. I want to ask if Miss Stephanie Williams, following up with the initiative that the UN uh, had issued about welcoming the declaration of the two ceasefire from both sides. Yes, I mean, she and, and she said she would secure a uh, disarmed uh, region between Sert and Ras Lanouf as the oil crescent. Is she trying to achieve Yes, our, our, our work uh, and her work very much continues and is in touch with all the relevant parties. And my second question, I might miss this. Do you have any comment on the suspension of the Constitutional Committee meeting in Geneva? If I missed it, I apologize. No, I did. I, we did. We put out the note to correspondence and we flagged it that, you know, obviously because of uh, three members of the committee uh, testing positive for COVID-19, we've informed the Swiss authorities uh, and obviously our, the, the, the UN office in Geneva who are providing the, the technical 
uh, support. And right now, everything is, is on hold. Thank you. OK. Uh, Evelyn, and then Stefano. Uh, hello, Steph. Um, there was a story, I believe it was the New York Post, of a uh, Burkina Faso diplomat who up his maid and uh, sent her to the hospital, and there was a police report filed. But because he has diplomatic immunity, everything continues as before. Um, what happens in that case? Can the United Nations tell the mission to please send the man home? Of or course, we, we've we've seen uh, we've seen the reports, uh, the press, uh, and I would add that these these reports of what happened are are very concerning indeed. Um, we expect the the mission of Burkina Faso and the host country authorities to address the matter bilaterally, uh, which is in line of with how the headquarters agreement works. We will, of course, continue to follow up the matter and engage with the mission and the host country as appropriate. But at this point, I don't have any uh, any further question. But it is, at this point, a bilateral issue uh, between the host country, the, the U.S., and the Burkina, uh, Burkina B mission. Mr. Vaccaro. Thank you, Stefan. Uh, two questions. One is about uh, the migrants in the Mediterranean. The president of Sicily region, uh, Nello Mustachi, yesterday ordered all the hotspots where the migrants are put in the, on the beginning of the arrival to be closed if they don't, um, for a sanitary reason. If they, you know, because they think that the, the COVID-19 is spreading through Sicily because the migrants' arrival, where they are uh, a large percentage, uh, uh, they say they are positive. Uh, so he gave a deadline of tonight, if less than less than, than six hours, at 12 o'clock midnight uh, um, Europe time, Italian time. So the Italian government responded in a way that we, it's not really clear that if they responded that he can do that or not. They say that for health, for practically for migration policies, the national policy cannot act, but for sanitary uh, uh, policy, then he could uh, have something to say about that. So my question is, in a few hours, according to the president of Sicily, uh, many hotspots will be closed with a thousand of migrants in, and he want to, we don't know exactly how, but he want to expel all those migrants and send them to Italy or Ste send them to Uno. Ste Uno. Stefano, uh, I, I, Actually, I come with a question. The Secretary General, what advice has for the President of Sicily and also eventually the government, the national government of Italy, on resolve this uh, issue? The Secretary General is not going to mediate uh, on issues of having of, of re provincial versus uh, central powers in Italy. What I can tell you is that every government needs to live up to its responsibilities in dealing with refugees, in dealing with migrants. We all need to show compassion and solidarity. Uh, and I think it is, you know, whether it's in Italy or other places, and we've seen it in other places, it is very important that every human being on that territory receives this receives access to health care because no one in any community is safe until everyone is safe. And so okay. The other part of the question is, is still related is that that still the president of Sicily say that he will not let any any uh, ref, uh, any migrants uh, um, a ship or, or boat arrive to Sicily or, or land to Sicily if they arrive from Tunisia because he said that Tunisia is not at war and so they are no refugee and he will just send them back. What do you uh, think about that? Again, that's an issue that is between the, uh, the national and the provincial government. I would refer you back to my first uh, answer. Okay, uh, my chat function doesn't seem to be functioning. So if anyone has... Uh, has a question, wave or open up your mic or or just say goodbye. Well, hi, I'm Nizar again. Uh, Stefan, do you hear me? Yeah. 
Thank you. Uh, do you have any monitoring, uh, monitoring uh, mechanism in Lebanon to see that the aid is going to the right people and not being used for political purpose by some organizations in Lebanon? As, as a standard policy, uh, all the aid that is distributed, either UN aid or distributed with UN money, uh, is, is monitored and reported, uh, reported on. Thank you. Okay. Uh, let's go, Stefano. Yes, thank you, Stefan. Uh, and I go back, of course, to Colombia. Do you have any, any news that you want to share with us about the death? Of I have unfortunately no, uh, no, no update for you on that uh, tragic case. Okay, uh, hasta mañana. Thank you. Bye-bye.